Hi bro, real quick video and I'm just about able to talk because I've taken my beds. This is Windows. But if I switch here, hang on. One second, bear with me. If I switch here and switch it across, you'll see that it will go to my Mac. Should do anyway, there you go. And now I'm on my Mac. And you can see my login program, which I absolutely love. This program is just so awesome. This is the uh, cluster. Uh, it's also got my log on there, dating back from, I think, about 1986. So I've loaded it all up, but that's the cluster. This is the expert software, which would be the SDR that I finally get, because I think it is the best one that I could possibly use. It has some beautiful features. It really does. It uses the same software as the MB1. The dongle is expensive, it's about 200 and something uh, dollars. So, well, I, I think it's expensive for what it is, but I'm going to get it because I want to use this software. And the software is absolutely superb. It would do whatever you want it to do, and it's the, the scope when it comes up on it, it is absolutely rocket fast. Here's the um, the map which is connected to the map logger. As a, as a spot comes in, you notice as a spot comes in, I've got it on auto lookup. If you look there, you can see auto lookup. And what happens on the map? It will auto look up. I can also, if I want to, if I go full screen, I don't know if I can show you this. Hang on. If I go full screen, you'll see there it is, full screen. But it doesn't stretch it. As you can see, it's not stretched at all. It's just um, in a different resolution. So uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's actually yeah. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about this monitor. It doesn't stretch it at all. And like you can see here, the whole map. It, it keeps changing because obviously it's connected to the cluster at the moment. But let me turn it back. Let's go back. Let's go here. And you'll see it will go back to where it was. Same with this, if I go here, and I want to make this uh, scope go full screen, look, look what happens. Hang on. You'll see, there she is, she's full screen, but like I said, it doesn't stretch it, you'll see what I mean, it's not stretched, and uh, it's just wider, <laughs> because it's displaying in, it in a different resolution, you'll see that nothing, nothing's been stretched at all. That's what's so beautiful about this monitor. Nothing stretches. It uh, just displays it in a different resolution. Let me um. Let me go back. Let me just put that back. So when I'm using it, it'll be really, really nice to um to use the software. I'm going to use the Mac purely for ham radio. And like I say, I'm going to use the map on this side. That will control the rotator, this controls the rotator, as you can see up here, I don't think you see that, my radio is not connected yet and the rotor is not connected, obviously it's in the kitchen, haven't got the shack finished, but um, eventually it will be connected to the rotor, so if I want to connect to a spot like this one, like EA9, whatever, or like this one here that's just come in, but, um, I think it's a uh, Q8 or something like that. Paul Lima, that's uh, uh, Amman, I think, something like that. Um, and you can see the distance there, the beam heading. And there it is up there on the spot. You can see there, that's the spot that's just come in. But the great thing about it is I'll be able to have the SDRs connected to the two TS-870s. And uh, because there's a uh, dual port, two, uh, two ports of two of them, it means I can display two bands. Uh, so I'll be able to do exactly the same, pretty much what I've done on the 7800, just do it a lot better. A lot, lot better. <laughs> now the great thing is I can use the filters, the digital filters on the actual software, as well as the ones on the uh, on the 870. But, but there it is. I thought I'd just do this quick video for you. I'm not very well. Um, I'm feeling a... A little bit better today, but I'm in a lot of pain. It hurts to talk, so I'll end this video now. But I'm really pleased. It took me ages to get my little mini Mac here. It took me ages to get it fixed. 
the uh, the big pieces down there you won't see that because it's in the dark but um i couldn't get my mini mat working at all and then uh, this little dongle here that i got on ebay um sorted it all out for me <laughs> it was the only way to do it anyway i really can't wait to get this in the shack the, the shack at the moment looks a bit bare but that's at, at the moment um, got a lot more work to do on it obviously got um, shelves to put it in the sides here um, really is nice the way that the worktop sort of goes in like this um, it'll, look really, it'll look really really superb when it's done the mounts on the wall and all the gears in there <coughs> but I'm pleased I got my Mac working and like I say this software this is my favourite SDR software without a doubt because it's the same as what the MB1 uses so I'm really interested in getting that um, Calibro Nano um, dongle and the basic the dongle I'll have it on the switch um, it will be plugged into the mini Mac and then I'll have a switch going from the radios to like the antenna so I can bypass the radios if I want to go up to 500 megs or just use it for HF on the 870s I'll still have the SDR play this is my SDR play here it's in a metal box, completely different isn't it? <laughs> Looks totally different in a metal metal casing. And the reason it's in a metal casing is because it's just a lot better that way. You don't get problems with uh, lots of noise and RF pickup and stuff like that. So I've got the original case upstairs but I put it in a metal casing. And it's just better. Anyway, switch you soon. I'm hoping that you'll come down sometime. Not feeling that great. See you in a, see you in a bit, right? Bye-bye.